What was wrong with it? Absolutely nothing, as far as she could tell. The ceramic bowl was beautifully decorated with painted scenes of swans at play on a lake. The water at the bottom of the bowl was clean and clear, and unlike the outhouse, there were no awful smells. There was even a basket of newspaper strips on the floor beside the base for after one had finished, much more disposable and sanitary than the corn cobs and sticks one normally found in outhouses. All told, there was nothing to prevent her from using the flush toilet. So, why am I so afraid of this thing? She wondered. Shirley had been at the hunting lodge for nearly three weeks, but in that time she had not used any of the flush toilets in the house even once, which made her an outlier, because, as far as Shirley could tell, everyone else used them and seemed no worse for wear. Sir Joseph used them, Griffin and Lucinda began using them after the third or fourth day, Milverton used them, the other two maids, Hilly and Beth, found them rather luxurious, and she had good reason to suspect both Garland the cook and his son used them when they needed to relieve themselves. Only she and Mrs. Preston, who was an older and much more traditional woman than Shirley was, refused to use them, and Shirley was starting to feel silly for doing so. However, today she had been tasked with cleaning all the water closets in the house, and she happened to need to relieve herself, now seemed as good an opportunity as any to try out the newfangled thing. So why am I just standing here staring at it? She knew why, because in the back of her mind a terrifying moving picture was playing. The picture depicted the inside of the pipes connected to the flush toilet and a black smoke rising through them, exiting into the bowl and into the washroom. The black smoke was disease and plague and death personified, and it would harm anyone who breathed it in. Like a maid, standing there staring down at the ceramic bowl like it was an enemy, Shirley shook her head. To hell with this, she thought, her inner voice a snarl. You're being so childish. Just sit down and use the damn thing. With a huff, Shirley set down her cleaning supplies, held up the skirts of her uniform, and sat spreading her legs over the bowl. Her knickers, made of two separate articles of clothing, tied to her hips and to each other with strings and snaps, were untied and unconnected above her crotch. As she spread her legs, the gap between the two articles of clothing widened, exposing her private parts to the open toilet bowl. Shirley shivered as she felt the cold ceramic touch her bare skin, but endured and concentrated. A moment later, she felt the rush of urine inside her and heard the stream hitting the inside of the bowl. When that had passed, she squeezed the muscles in her backside. There were a few small plops and then one big plop. She exhaled. This isn't too bad, she thought, and it's less of a bother than the outhouses. I could see this becoming more commonplace. Her business finished, Shirley leaned over to grab a strip of newspaper from the basket. Below her arse, Something gurgled. Shirley froze, ears pricked for sound. When she heard nothing, she let loose the tension she had not been aware she had been holding and continued to lean over for the newspaper. Must have been bubbles, she thought. After all, there's water in the bowl. Perhaps when piss and shit mixes with water, it lets out bubbles with a distinctive noise. I've seen enough bubbles in the shit and mud outside the Avondale's home to know that bubbles sometimes appear. Perhaps I've never heard anything, because I was always on the second floor. Another gurgle sounded from the bowl. Shirley ignored it and grabbed a strip of newspaper. Something scraped along her arse cheek. Shirley bolted upright with a shriek and spun around, clutching several strips of newspaper in a clenched fist. Nothing was in the bowl except her own waist. She was tempted to lean over to make sure and thankfully stopped herself. Her shit was too small for anything to hide behind, and the yellow water offered no hiding places for anything in there. She must have just imagined feeling something touching her ass. The thoughts of bad smells and miasmas rising through the pipes was making her imagine things. But it felt so real, like the tip of a fingernail across my skin, 